we have um, about two minutes. I figure I'm not going to rush this. So all of you sit down, relax, settle in. It's the last talk of the day. Oh, there's one more after, right? But we get, oh, the, the thing at the auditorium or something. Um, I, before we start, I am somewhat interested in finding out how many of you all are familiar with accessibility in general? Or, okay, so if I, I mean, just the general idea of it and, you know, how to apply it to your own websites and stuff like that, things that you control. Okay, good. Um, yeah, give it a couple more seconds, just in case anyone else comes in. But, I think we're almost good to go. Well, hi everyone. Um, I'm Athena Yao. I'm the lead front end developer for an open source blogging platform, Dreamwood. Deborah, one of our accessibility team co leads, was originally supposed to give this talk, but unfortunately she got caught by bad weather and her flight couldn't make it. But I would like to credit her with both the slides and the original idea. She put a lot of work into it. Oh God. Okay. So, before we start, I want to be clear what I'm not here to talk about. I'm not here to talk about general, general accessibility. I assume that all of you know something about accessibility or are interested in or have heard of it. I'm not here to give the one-on-one -on -one accessibility talk. I'm not here to talk about the things you write, accessibility in things you write. That's entirely under your control. There are a ton of great you know, online tutorials in-person training sessions out there. I've linked to a couple of uh, great presentations and resources at the end of this talk. The slides will, will be put up, so don't worry about it. What I am here to talk about, though, is authoring tools. Now, these are the things you write that enable other people to write their own things. And you don't control that second part, that second part Sometimes it feels like you can't do anything about it, but you control that first part, and that means that you can use that control over the authoring tools to help people, to encourage them, to make their own content accessible. Sometimes without even letting, you know, without even having them know that they have somehow made their content more accessible. It just works. Um, I want to also say that we shouldn't assume that users should be accessibility experts, just like we, don't, we generally don't assume that users are experts in HTML or CSS. We just make it, you know, it, it's something we do. We make things work. One thing we can do, though, we can assume, we can start off by assuming that users would be happy to make their content accessible. They just have to know, they just may not know it's even an issue, or they may not be aware how to do it, or they just may think it's too hard. You can help with all of that. You can change that. I want to talk about how to look at your authoring tools and how to you know, build in accessibility without making any assumptions about your end user's level of accessibility knowledge, any assumptions about their passion for this kind of thing. So we, we actually have a great resource. I'm sure you all have heard of the authoring of the W3C. You will have heard of the Web Accessibility Initiative. And many of you will have heard of the Authoring Tool Accessibility Guidelines. The A tag. If you haven't heard of this, you will at least have heard of the, you know, it's better known, WCAG, the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. The, this resource, it's great. 
you should look it up at some point after this talk, please. Um, but it's just a tiny bit too much to cover in the 40, 45 minutes I have here right now. So I want to start as simple with three basic principles. Well, first of all, you want to make sure that you just do the right thing for the user. Don't make them jump through hoops to turn on the option that should be on in the first place. Just do it. Just do it automatically. Teach the user as they use your interface to create. Don't expect them to magically know that this thing is important or that this thing is even possible. You have to keep in mind the level of knowledge, of technical comp competence or interest that your user has. Help the user do the right thing. Give them a hand. Don't leave them stranded. And OK, so these principles are nice. I want to talk now about putting them to action. And let's start with everyone's favorite accessibility topic, alternative text. Um, OK, so I know you guys have, I know all of you have indicated that, or most of you have indicated that you are aware of um, basic accessibility concepts at the very least. But for the sake of anyone looking at this who is not uh, completely aware. I just want to bring up a short review. Alt text is not uh, alt text is not that thing you see when you hover over an image. It's not the you know the punchline of the joke in XKCD. It's um that happens to be the title that yellow thing. It um it the title is often used to add additional context or information, make a joke. The thing with the title, it actually is inaccessible to various people. People using screen readers, people browsing the, um, people browsing purely by keyboard, um, people using speech recognition. It's also not even visible, it's not often visible to people on mobile, which, you know, it's a growing population. All of these people, there are many, there are many of them. You can't just ignore them. Alt text is uh, alt text is not exposed trivially to end users of you know modern web browsers who aren't using some kind of adaptive technology, and that's good. That's great because you don't want redundancy. If you can see the image, you probably don't actually need to see the alt text. That's what the alt text is for, right? The, I'm just exposing it here using the WAVE toolbar, the Web Accessibility Evaluation Tool. Again, another great tool. If you're not already aware of it, you should look at, you should take a look at some point. OK, I just want to start by clearing up this common misconception. So I want to, um, I want to talk about examples of what not to do. Um, but first, I want to make clear that alt text is not the be all and end all of. As much as I joke about how it's you know our favorite topic, it's not the be all and end all of accessibility initiative of of knowledge. It shouldn't be the only thing you should focus on. There are a ton of things: JavaScript controls, dynamic pages, dynamic content loading that need more developer time and duration. But for our purposes, for for something that uh, users use, something that users understand, something that will often be, uh, often be used or exposed in the interface, something that users have to input content in, because you can't handle alt text. You can't, you can't automatically generate alt text. That way, it, it, it lies pain. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. But as, um, as good an example as alt text is, it's often done wrong because it requires input from the content creator. So we need to teach them how to make it right. We have to teach them this is possible, this is good, and we have to make it easy for them. 
I, I've taken a couple of specific websites, but I've removed uh, as much identifying information as I could. If you recognize them, please don't say what they are. The point is not the actual website. The point is the patterns, the pitfalls that people run into when, you know, when you're trying to put in, insert all text, when you're trying to apply this idea of having user input content and putting it in, into the image. I don't want to name and shame my specific websites, but I would like to talk about the specific patterns. So let's start with a website, Fubar, or well, Web 2.0, Fuber. Um, so it's got a label with, which has a file name on it. It's got a nice big description field, which I really like. So I've gone ahead and put in, you know, I've put in some, some good old text. And it seems easy, right? I like it. It's easy. Everything is there. Um, just to recap, so I have the label which contains the file name and description which contains the alt text, presumably the alt text. My work here is done. I upload. It's all good, except it's not really because the alt text contains the file name and the description I put in is not anywhere. Like, it's, you can't see past my screenshot, but it's just not anywhere there. And at this point, I'm slightly, I guess, I feel like I might have done something wrong. Maybe I didn't hit save or something. So I look at a couple of other views. The, uh, the, when you go to upload another image, you have a list of recently uploaded files. You, you just have the file name over there and there's no description. If you click through to the specific view, you, th there's not even any text fields. I've lost my description, I've lost my alt text. I've lost everything, I don't know. Luckily, I do know of another page that does, uh, uh, that sh um, contains all of the files I've, up I've uploaded. So I look there, and again, it's the same thing. I still don't have, you know, I still don't have the description I put in. I still just have the file name, but I click through. And okay, finally, I found my label. Well, the label, and I found the description. I found the original things I put in. I know maybe, now I know, I haven't maybe made a mistake. I might still have, but it's there. It's looks like it's in the proper field. So it's not like my browser crashed mid post or whatever. Um, at this point, I am slightly worried. I would like to know where my description went. So I look up the help pages and the help pages tell me that I can do various things from the edit asset screen, including edit the description. But that still doesn't tell me where we can get alternative text from. It doesn't tell me what happened. It doesn't tell me what the description is. Okay, so I just want to go back to my original assumptions. And this one is that I assume that the label contains the file name and description contains the alt text. Now what happened was at this point, I spent, I don't know, 20 minutes just going through things and being all confused. And then I did what, if I weren't making a presentation, this is what I would have done in the first place, right? Turn to Google, search the web. So what happens is, it turns out that this label, this thing that contained the file name, this thing that I just ignored, well, this thing that I just ignored, that just contained all text. And well, for completeness sake, I mean, it's not, I would be bothered if someone put, up, put this up and talked about it and didn't actually tell me what description did. Uh, description is just the custom 
it's just uh, used in custom themes. You have to put it into your own theme using the Fuber asset description tag, something like that. And it's not in any basic themes. So basically, it's not in any of the common or basic themes that you start out with. So basically, it, it's unused. You have this whole field in the text box that you think, well, I can use this to. If you don't know anything about accessibility, you might think, well, I can at least put stuff in it. If you do know something about accessibility, you might think to yourself, well, I can use this to help people. But it's not used anywhere. So I'd just like to summarize quickly what happened with all this. The text fields aren't always available. I mean, that's not purely accessibility related, but it does get discouraging for a naive user. It, 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 you don't want to confuse them. You don't want to dampen their enthusiasm. Um, label and description in this case might not have been the best, might not have fit exact, might not have fit expectations. If you do a web search, you will find that most people will look at description and jump to the conclusion that it's alternative text. And really, would anyone here disagree, disagree with me? Would anyone here think that it's obviously not alternative text? I take that as a no. Um, the description as the biggest text box right there front and center wasn't really useful. Didn't do what it seemed to advertise. This one is a bit tricky, right? Um, because all text, when you uploaded images here, you applied the alt to the image. But one of the things about alt text, it's not just a label for the image. It's totally context sensitive. You want it to be relevant to, the, to whatever is around it. So if you're just posting an image, just the image, you might put in more detailed alt text. If you have the image and you have surrounding contextual text, like you have an entire entry, and the image is just a tiny portion of it, it's just to give a little flavor of, or context, you'd have a different kind of alt text. It's not just describe the image. It's describe, describe what this image is for where you are right now. Yes, exactly. Um, so uh, he said that um, the use of the alt text should be dependent on the what the usage is on the rest of the page. Did I get that correctly? What, the, what, purpose, the image what, pr what purpose the image serves on the rest of the page? And yes, that's exactly correct. That's what. Um, thank you. Um, that's exactly what I mean by alt text should be context dependent. Uh, Pre-populating the label with the file name, confusing. It makes people think that it's an official thing, they shouldn't touch it, that it's doing something else. The alt should be the descriptive. There's actually, besides the confusing the end user, Pre-populating with the file name actually confuses screen readers as well. It's not what you should be doing. You should never put irrelevant text that is things like the file name or, or the file format or generic text, things like image, screenshot, picture, without any you know, follow-up. Because when, you, when the screen reader comes to the page, goes through the page, then it's just thing, blah, 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 image. It's not blah, 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 useful description of image. They know there's an image there, but so what? Doesn't help. The, uh, um, so it also messes a bit with accessibility validators. Um, because if you put invalid text 
and, and run it through the, one of the automated testing tools for accessibility, it doesn't, it can't, there is no way for it to tell that this is good alt text. It can just tell that there is text there and maybe it's you know relevant, maybe it's not, but you get, it, it won't throw any errors. You don't get that further feedback. So what happens is you're not only, you don't only not provide, you're not, you're not providing any helpful information to screen readers and you're actively providing incorrect data for any other context that this image would be viewed in. And finally, there was no help provided. No, none of the help that was provided. There was no online, there was no inline help. The help pages weren't quite useful because they just stated what you could see, but they didn't say anything about why, what are you trying to do? They, in the context of looking for how do I, how do I put in alt text? How do I give useful information, useful textual information for images? There's, it doesn't help in that direction. You had to, you have to go through a web search and I would do it. I, I would run a web search. I wouldn't say that every user I've ever had would have done the same thing. So that's FUBAR. Let, FUBAR. Let's talk about another example. This one does a, has a different approach. It seems to be better with uh, software principles, but um, th there is a very important human factor question that seems to be an issue. So we'll talk about X, Y, Z, Z, Y. And it's, it's actually very nicely done. It, um, there's the image that you put up and there's a nice big section there for a caption, which I filled in, as you do. And as you can see, these are actually two separate images. On the right, you have the, what that looks like to someone viewing the, the website. It's just a caption underneath the image, which, is, which seems nice, right? You also have the um, alt text. I, I've used one of the Firefox developer tools for this. Uh, sorry, not, I've used uh, the view image info from Firefox, it's Firefox's context menu, and that gives you additional info, information. Again, I wouldn't really expect anyone to do this, but for the purposes of um, demonstration, I just want to show that yes, it also does have the exact same alt text. There, I mean, it, it sounds nice in theory, but there is one, there are two major problems with this. The first is that alt text and captions should never actually be the same. It's redundant. Um, basically, after, again, going back to screen readers, after it goes, when it sees the image, it will say accessibility in Rick Chick. And then after that, it will say again, accessibility in Rick Chick, because that's what you, coded to say, that's what you coded it to do, and it's redundant. For one image or, a sh or you know, short alt text, that's fine, whatever, right? But who just views one image these days? It's 100, 20, 100 at a time. It's, or if you have, you know, absurdly long alt text, which you shouldn't have, but if you have absurdly long alt text, then it's the same thing over and over again. Everything repeated twice, redundant. Would you still go to that website if everything you looked at just told you the same thing twice? It's not so fun. The other thing, uh, the other uh, flaw with this is a more subtle one, and it has to do with the actual website culture. 
Th this platform, um, the users are really visually oriented. They don't usually post a lot of text. They will often want to post just an image and for impact and just that, the image on the page. They don't want extra text cluttering up things at the bottom of their images. So as sort of a, in general, as sort of a visual purity thing, they probably wouldn't go for that. But it goes further than that because this particular website is, is known for posting memes, images with lots of text on them. And you know, if you go here, I, this image would be captioned, could be captioned as a doge, a doge meme with a Shiba Inu looking at you. Captioned, such accessible, so UX, very screen read, wow. But having, having that text already on the image, you wouldn't, you really wouldn't want it below the image again, right? It doesn't make much sense. If the things that you're posting have a lot of text on the image, it, it doesn't make sense visually. It doesn't seem to make sense conceptually to just have, repeat that same text over at the bottom. And this isn't you know, random text. It's actually part of what the image says. So you can't just not have it. If you're planning on if you're planning on putting on alt text, so to summarize X Y Z Z Y, it, it it seemed better, but the problem is that the alt and caption are identical, which leads to redundancy, which leads to frustration. And as a human factor, the mechanism for creating the alt text also had the side effect of doing something with a visual result that was unappealing to this site's user base. Basically. It feels like it should have worked. The, in, the interface for putting in things was nice and clear. And actually put in the thing where you expected it to. But it was done in such a way that probably no one would ever actually type a caption, type up a caption for that. So how can you do it? Well, I, I just like to talk a bit about what Dreamwith did, how we did, how we handled the alt attribute. And I'm not saying that this is the only way to do it. But it's what worked for us, knowing our users. It's what worked for us, knowing the culture of our site, knowing what our users um, expect and are willing and happy to do. So this is the image, uh, insert image modal, modal box on Dreamwith. And we only put in two fields for simplicity's sake. We have some inline help. And we made uh, sure that we put in, we, we specifically say that the description is used by screen readers, some mobile devices, and when images are turned off in your browser. So we're not just saying put in a description. We're saying this is where the description is relevant which does affect how you write what you write. We also put in a link to more information, um, specifically tips on how to actually write good descriptions because th th there is a bit of a balance here between brevity and accuracy and that kind of thing. Do you write that it's a cartoon image? Is it important, that kind of thing? Do you give more background information? Do you just assume that if you're part of this group that you already know? So we talk a little bit about that in a, a sort of longer FAQ. We don't expect everyone to look at this, but for the sake, <laughs> but for the sake of anyone who is interested, that information is there, you don't have to wonder, you don't have to sit there and wonder if you're actually helping anyone or if you're actually doing something useful. If you're doing it right, if you want to know, you can find out. 
We also link to this uh, from our general help pages. And so you'll see that if you put in the image URL and you put in the short description, we insert it, we, in, we generate the HTML for you, and here is the alt text, pretty much as you would expect, just based on everything that you saw. Um, we also did something else if you don't put in alt text, because that's sort of a tricky thing. If you don't put in any alt text, if you put alt equals open quote and close quote, it's seen as a decorative image, which means that screen readers don't, are, it's not read to screen readers. Decorative images like, you know, fancy line separators or cute little images that don't actually add any information to the content, but it's just there to look nice. It, it used to be, I think people put fancy bullet points using images. These days, not so much, but it's that kind of thing, where you don't have to know that it's a fancy bullet point. It's just a bullet point, right? Um, so if you have the alt equals open quote, close quote, that's one thing. If you don't have the alt attribute at all, that's another thing. That says that there is no additional information about this image. You don't know if it's decorative or content. You don't have a description of the image. If, if you run it through a validator, you'll actually get an error, but it's an error. So what we did, instead of saying that, instead of trying to guess what the alt text could be, instead of you know, pre-populating with, I don't know, the date or the file name or whatever, and instead of saying that this is, instead of giving empty alt text, which would just tell you, which what that implies is that it's, a dec it's decoration. It doesn't have any content, which would probably not be the case, really, if you're writing a blog post. We just leave it out altogether. Yes, it's going to throw errors. If you run through a validator, we think that's what it, it should do. So when, like I said earlier, you don't have to follow exactly what we did. Many of the things that we, many of the choices we, we made were informed by the specific knowledge we had of our, of our user base. So we asked ourselves a couple of questions, and these, these questions might be very useful for you to ask yourself too. How many, how many um, how well do you know your users? How many options can they tolerate? We talked about putting a checkbox to mark if a, if something was uh, was decorative or not, or was actual image content, but we decided not to go with that. Options fatigue. Don't want things to be super complicated. Are you enforcing or encouraging? We talked about throwing an error when you don't put in alt text because that is an error, right? But for a social media blogging platform, it would probably not really have helped much. It would have been confusing. It would, it, it would have driven people away from actually posting images. But if you're writing something for you know, a corporation or government or schools, anything where you have to make sure that any content put up um, conforms to all applicable laws, then this might be an appropriate thing to do. It might be appropriate to actually not let them put up the image unless they have alt text. Different needs for different organizations. What kind of education can you do? Again, with the uh, governmental and corporate environment, you can do a more formal uh, education initiative with something like social media or blogging or whatever, you have to rely on the mores of your, or the cultural mores of your audience. You can do sneaky things to build it up, drop in hints here or there, contextual help. But you don't have that same support, so it really depends on what you are capable of doing. 
do they already care about accessibility? And I will admit Dream with Hair is kind of cheated. We started out with core contributors and a lot of initial early, a lot of early adapters, adopters who actually cared about accessibility in some way. Maybe we're already using adopt, adaptive technology or knew someone who did, or were at least familiar with the concept that this might be important, that there's people out there, that you know, there's something you can do, that it's something relevant, or it's possible. Other websites or your own organizations might not have the same. So you, you'll have to go back first and develop passion for that. You have to educate people not just on the, we, we were lucky, we were able to focus just on teaching people the what and the how, but you might also have to focus on teaching people, on encouraging people towards the why. Why is this important? What visual effects are acceptable to your users? Um, is if there's anything that you need to adjust? Uh, what kinds of trade-offs, if any, they would be, they are, would be willing to accept or what kind of control would they be willing to put in or give up? And finally, what level of hand coding can they do? I would strongly encourage at least providing some help. Don't expect people to just put in raw HTML. Sorry. I, um, but depending on how technical your users are, you might be able to ask to um, it might be okay to assume that they can tweak things slightly, if need be. Okay, so it's not just about the alt text. It's not just about what you can explicitly, alt text was a great example, but it's not just about what you can explicitly get the user to do. It's not just about what you can what actions the user can take or, or what actions you can encourage the user to take. There are plenty of ways that you as a developer can encourage, can just do the right thing, can make things happen without having to have someone turn on a switch or having to have someone input more context. Sometimes the information is right there. You just need to do it. Hmm. Uh, for example, YouTube embeds. Now, the thing about YouTube embeds is that they're flash objects. And these tend to have huge accessibility issues. They're not the most transparent things in the world to manipulate. You can't really get much information out of them, and they're not exposed API-wise, but it, um, it turns out that the websites themselves, most of them these days, YouTube is a big one, use HTML5 controls, and these are much better. These are much, much better in terms of accessibility, native accessibility, in terms of not actually getting in the way of what a user wants to do, but embeds are still embeds. If someone puts up an embed, it might be, it might still be flash. So what we did, what we decided to do, is we took the embed URL, and if it's from YouTube or Vimeo, which both have APIs to get this kind of thing, we took the, t uh, we queried their API, and we took the title and URL, and generated a link to the website, which basically turned, it, turned the embed from being this opaque box of blah that you, know, you can't touch if you don't have flash for whatever reason. And there are many, many reasons. You might, just might not be able to access it. It might, be, it might slow down your computer. You might be worried about connection. might be worried about autoplay. All kinds of reasons. Instead of it just being this, you know, there is a flash object here. I have no idea what it does. We took it and we, add, uh, we queried the original site, came up with the, got the title, got the URL, 
now you at least know a little bit about what you could con conceivably be clicking to. Is it interesting? Is the title something you're interested in? It's not just there's something here. It's there's something here. This is what it's about, sort of. Here's the link to our, to, so you can look at it if you want, if you so choose. And, we, and because you can just do this in the back end, you don't have to, you don't have to ask um, your users to enter a special URL or anything. You don't have to tell them to input the title and input another link to the site. You can just do it automatically for them. The other thing we did, and this seems like a small thing, but we have many, many web, many uh, themes. Many of them are user submitted. They, they, all, they all look different. But we made sure that none of them was the one true accessible theme. Which is a bit hard to say. You can't have a one true accessible theme anyway. There are conflicting accessibility needs. Some people need light and dark, uh, white and black, because dark on white, the glare of a bright uh, white background might hurt their eyes. Some people need white on dark, uh, sorry, dark on light, which is black on white, because, well, it's too low contrast if it's the other way around. They, can't, they have to squint to see it. Some people will prefer text icons because they're verbal thinkers, and some will prefer um, I, icon icons, icon links, <laughs> because they're visual thinkers. They look at it, and they know exactly what it's for. But the thing is, we made sure that all of, all of the web, all of the themes, all of the layouts ha had their own ability to change color, et cetera, you didn't have to choose between, um, you won't, wouldn't have to choose between is it pretty or is it accessible, okay? We made sure that where there's an image that's non-decorative, you have the alt text. You don't have to put, you don't have to edit your theme and add a custom tag and in order to make that work, if it's something we can help you with, if it's, something that should just work, you should make it just work across all themes, not just on the one accessible theme. JavaScript, accessibility of JavaScript, you know, inclusion of YARIO, which is a little different thing, but it, it, it's not something that should only be in the one theme that's tagged accessible. Use this. Use this if you have, you know, if you're using adaptive technology or anything. Make sure whatever you're doing to make any one theme accessible can also apply across all your themes, across everything. The other thing we did was that, again, back to conflicting accessibility needs, sometimes, even with everything we've done to try to make it easy or to, to not get in the way of accessibility, so, like uh, the example I said earlier, white and light on dark versus dark on light. Some people really need light and dark. Some people really want dark on light. We made it so that if you're viewing someone else's blog, someone else's site, it doesn't matter which site it is. You can just change it to your theme on the fly, which means that they, the site owners still have their visual identity, still have their, if it turns out that they need a certain kind of layout or whatever, a certain kind of coloring scheme, they still have that. But that shouldn't interfere with your ability, ability to read some, to read whatever you're looking at. Uh, so we thought it was pretty important, and it's turned out pretty well. We've had good feedback on that. And that's it. I, again, I'm Athena Yao. I presented a talk, I would, but I would definitely like to give credit to Deborah Kaplan, who came up with the talk in the first place and came up with the slides. Um, here are some resor good resources to start with. The, uh, yeah, any questions? I think we, ha we have like one and a half minutes. <laughs> I 
don't have any specific figures, but we did. Um, so one of the things we have, I, I focused in the talk on, uh, on inserting images into entries, but one of the things that we did do is that we also put it into avatars, the little icons that represent who you are as a user. We added in the ability to add alt text there. I, I know that's had fairly good adoption. And I, unfortunately, I don't have any concrete numbers. So you also don't know if the quality of the objects is good? <laughs> no, I can't say. Um, I, Deborah might have been able to, but unfortunately, she's not here at the moment. That's a fantastic point. I think I would like to talk to Deborah and company about it. Um, are there any other questions? Uh, yeah, I think we're done. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks all for coming.